Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we are looking at an interesting video which was an exclusive cinematic trailer which was made for the DTF Summer Show. Now if you don't know what DTF is or DTF Games in general, what it is is a development studio which is actually located in St. Petersburg, Russia and every year they run the Russian Game Developers Conference. What this basically means is a bunch of trailers and a bunch of different things come out very similar to what you would see from the western side of things which would be uh, E3 and uh, they just collect them together and one of the trailers which was shown was a trailer for War Thunder. Now since this is exclusive uh, you can actually find this on their website I'll make sure to leave a link in the description if you want to check it out for yourself and also I would like to thank Kate. Uh, Kate is a moderator on the Tech Hub Discord and also is an individual which runs a blog uh, which is focused on military technology and I will once again leave a link in the description to that. Kate has helped a lot when it comes to the translation of this uh, because obviously it's in Russian and uh, looking at all of the different things that it says and at the same time there is some exclusive content in this trailer itself. We will be running it with obviously music off. The main reason for this is because of copyright issues. I can uh, run it and uh, we'll just stop it at certain points for the uh, simple reason of that as well. So let's get started and have a look at this uh, in itself. It starts off with some aircraft carriers, Panthers, Sea Vixens, BF-109, some old footage that we've actually seen in other um, videos of War Thunder, and then of course the Harriers as well moving around. All of this is pretty standard stuff when it comes to War Thunder trailers. I'd also say if you are interested in other games, especially ones of Russian descent, one thing that must be noted is the fact uh, that there is a ton of them uh, on the website right now, even one for Crossout if you are interested in that. And also, I believe the Summer Games idea is ongoing uh, when it comes to the company, they're still releasing stuff, so it might be worth having a look at just so you can see new things. All the stuff we've seen so far indicates stuff we've already seen in War Thunder. Nothing too crazy, nothing too interesting. Uh, there is some naval ships there which may be different ideas, uh, but nothing too uh, insane. And now we get into the interesting stuff. You have two little clips of videos uh, which show new ideas right at the end here. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, the two areas are this here, which uh, is or seems to be a new ship. And then also you have a new challenger. Now, one of the things um, that we saw in the leaks from about a month ago now is there was a lot of top MBTs which were being worked on. A lot of machines which had access to either new systems or were just more modern variants of pre-existing MBTs that we have in the game. The thing that sets this challenger apart is this challenger might uh, be and seems to be as well one which is incredibly modern, designed for the Life Extension program. But before we get into that one, let's talk about this ship that we see here. Now, this ship definitely seems to be one of the Bismarck-class battleships, either the Turpids or, of course, the Bismarck itself. There were two uh, main, well, there were two ships of this class, the Bismarck and the Turpids, and obviously with very small differences between them, and at least in my opinion, I think this is the Turpids. The reason for this is because the Turpids was leaked, uh, once again, a month ago uh, from the uh, general from the general leaks that we saw uh, in the naval portion the turpits would have eight 380 millimeter guns it would also have access to 12 150 millimeter guns alongside 16 105s 16 37s and also 12 20 millimeters meaning that it has a hell of a aa complement and also would have access uh, to some other things such as torpedo tubes uh, eight of them to be exact for 
uh, use with torpedoes. It would also have access uh, to some other modifications, which would add more AA to the machine. Obviously, as the war went on, when it came to Germany and pretty much every other nation uh, in uh, World War II, they really beefed up their AA armament, and the Tirpitz was no different, adding a, a metric ton of 20 millimeter guns to the machine. That didn't stop it being sunk, though. <laughs> Unfortunately, this did not survive the war. Neither of the Bismarck classes survived World War II and also had pretty short service lives uh, compared to their hype, I suppose. With the Bismarck itself lasting less than a year from being commissioned into its fate, and then also the Tirpitz lasting around about three and a half years from the 25th of November 1941 to the 12th of November 1944. The Tirpitz would be one of those machines at the highest echelons of naval in War Thunder and also shows a dedication from Gaijin to once again push for larger machines, uh, not just with the leaks from last month, but also from this video itself. Maybe some of these things will be a little bit quicker to be brought into the game than you may think, uh, if this is uh, talking about, you know, stuff that we'll see this year. Obviously, we've had no roadmap or anything from War Thunder, so we can only base this on things that we've seen going forward. But when it comes to something like the Tirpitz, it's a definite uh, idea that has been pushed around quite a lot. Now, moving on to the Challenger. The Challenger itself is one of those machines uh, which has been talked about a lot in War Thunder to have its issues. And what I mean by this is it's one of those which uh, definitely has uh, probably not the best time at high ranks. It's a little bit slow. It doesn't really have anything that makes it stand out apart from the stock APFSDS compared to other vehicles. But this one that we see here looks very similar to the Black Knight variant of the machine. Now, the only thing that uh, kind of sets it apart is the color, of course, uh, being slightly lighter, but that could be down to lighting effects or others. The uh, parts of it which make it look like the Black Knight are the fact that there is this rivet-like look on the side of the turret, which isn't common on the standard challenges, and also the existence of the APS on the top and all of the other technologies which are added, including the new commander site. Now, when it comes to the Black Knight, if you don't know what it is, it was a idea put forward to um, extend the life of the Challenger 2. The Ministry of Defense in the UK were looking at uh, pushing forward uh, the Challenger 2 in service. They wanted to add new stuff to it. They wanted to increase its usability instead of starting to create a new MBT, um, which would have been around. And this was the offer from BAE Systems for the Challenger 2 life extension program. It wasn't accepted, and obviously in the recent news over the last few months, we had the Challenger 3. Uh, announced, which of course is the one uh, which uh, was picked for the life extension program. But for this machine, it still has a lot of factors which would make the Challenger at least unique when it came to War Thunder. The first one is an active protection system. Now, the active protection system can be seen on the top of the turret. Uh, it looks like extended smoke launches is probably the best way of putting it uh, if you wanted to compare it to something. But what this active protection system is, is the Iron Fist Hard Kill active protection system. This is designed by the Israel Military Industries, and the whole point of it is to be able to deal with uh, stuff coming at the Challenger in a hard kill sense. So basically throw something out at a projectile to meet it in the air as a countermeasure, so it hits it first before that projectile hits the tank. Simple as that. Um, it's been tested with many different ideas, uh, such as rocket propelled grenades, anti-tank guided missiles, heat ammunition, and even APFSDS in the form of kinetic energy penetrators. So this thing should be good enough to deal with the vast majority of weaponry that you see in War Thunder. Whether it's actually going to work like that in game is obviously a different question, but we'll find out when it's added. Uh, the way it works is through, uh, it scans the area for, uh, for stuff coming in. If it detects a threat, then once the threat is detected, 
It aims the system at the threat, fires uh, something at it in a hard sense, and uh, tries to damage it, knock it off course, or just annihilate it so it is destroyed before it hits the system. That's pretty much how it's designed. Uh, there's not too much elf, uh, else when it comes to it. There are different uh, countermeasure systems in this way. You know, there's uh, the hard kill active protection system. Then, of course, you have stuff such as the soft stuff and all of these different things we've talked about them before in various different videos. This would give the challenger something unique compared to the standard challenges which already exist. Then it would also have access to a laser warning system. Uh, so uh, if uh, you were targeted with something like a laser rangefinder in game, you would know about it. It would pop up, it would let you know which direction it was from, and therefore you could watch out for either helicopters or something such as the um, such as somebody laser range finding you in a ground vehicle like a tank. Now, uh, on top of the LWS that already exists in game, where the APS doesn't, so this would be something unique for the Challenger if it just comes in by itself. Then it also has regenerative braking. Uh, this basically means that the tank has been made more energy efficient by using less energy hungry kit and installing regenerative braking in the turret, which generates power when the gun slows down into position. It also has a really interesting thermal imaging technology on it and uh, this the reason why this one's interesting is actually not to do with uh, military stuff at all so when it comes to the thermal imaging system used, uh, you might have actually seen it uh, in civilian life, I suppose you would call it. Uh, in BBC's Planet Earth 2, the nature documentary series, which of course is voiced by David Attenborough, they actually used a very advanced thermal imaging set of cameras to be able to track a pack of leopards which were hunting in the darkened streets of Mumbai. Now, this setup was actually designed by Leonardo, uh, the aerospace company. And now, uh, instead of just being used in Planet, uh, Planet Earth 2, it was designed to also be used on this MBT. So BAE Systems uh, were actually very much interested in the idea, and this night vision system was going to be a key part of their plan. So it's kind of a, an interesting cross between civilian and military life there, as a little bit of a tidbit. It also would have a, si a system where uh, the commander um, optical control would be completely independent from the gunner control, so therefore the gunner could target uh, something on the ground, and then the commander would be able to uh, use the site to look at other targets, and therefore you could set up targets as you went along. Now, the things that weren't really upgraded with this system was stuff like engine power, armor, it uses exactly the same turret as a standard Challenger 2, and also the gun was pretty much the same as well, firing the similar ammunition. So you're not really looking at the hard things uh, in-game that would be improved, but all of the extra technologies, uh, such as the mechanics in-game, would be where this thing shines. So for me, I think it would be really cool to see. I'm sure we will see it at some point and also it does mean that alongside other things such as the Leclerc that we saw in the leaks the British will also be getting something spicy. As always I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank BRFC, Swollen Ostrich, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe, Conte Baraka, Eugens Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Lafouche, Barine, and Samuel Schlick for supporting the channel.